Hey team, welcome back to my channel. This application will swap two numbers from a list, but first I'll show you the original list, swap the two numbers, and then show you the updated list. Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's begin writing an assembly language program. So we're gonna begin with the global and extern directives. So we're gonna say global main and then extern printf. Let me explain what each of these do. So global main tells the assembler that the main function is accessible from other parts of the program. You'll see in just a moment, we'll define main. Now, extern printf, this tells the assembler that the printf function is defined somewhere else. And as you know, that is a C standard library function. Now, after we get done with the global and extern directives, we begin with the section.data. So we say section.data, and then we have a couple variables. Our first one is going to be called before swap and its data type is db and we're going to assign this string pattern to this original order of numbers and then we're going to say 10 comma 0 now what does this mean so this is our data type a byte and then this right here is the string pattern 10 represents new line and 0 is a terminator for this message. And there we are with before swap. Now our next variable will be after swap. These are messages that I will show before and after we actually write out the list of numbers. So it's a byte. And now look here, I'm gonna begin with 10. We know 10 is a new line. And then we're gonna say after uh, positions, zero and one were swapped. And then I'm gonna say 10 comma zero again. So I'm gonna end it with a new line and then terminate that string. Next one called FMT format. And it is also a data byte. And look here, we're gonna say position equals percent D. That's a placeholder. And then we're gonna say value equals percent D. And then 10, zero. And now we're gonna declare our list of numbers and I'm gonna call that nums. And the data type is DQ because these are eight byte numbers. Uh, this is a 64 bit program. So we're gonna put in there a 13, three, and then a 14, eight, and then 19. Now we're just gonna keep it simple here and use another variable called array size. And we're gonna say EQU five. Now that just means there's five elements, one, two, three, four, and five. You get it. Now, while we're on this list, let's actually talk about offsets of these numbers. So we know because this is of type DQ, these are eight bytes, 13 actually begins at zero. And then three begins at eight and then 16, 24, and then 32. Does that make sense? So as you can see, they're just eight byte differences in memory. Okay, excellent. So our next section is gonna be called section text. Now remember up on line one, we said global main. Well, here's where we're gonna define that. And now we're gonna say main with a colon. So inside of main function, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up the stack frame. What we're gonna say is push RBP and then move RBP RSP. Now what does all that mean? Well, these are instructions to set up the stack frame for the main function. Now a stack frame is a region of memory used to store local variables and function return addresses. That's all it is. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually print out this first original order of numbers message to the screen. And how we do that is we, uh, let's just do a little comment there. We'll say print message to the screen. 
and then we're going to say XOR, the RAX register, RAX. So that's just going to zero that out. And then we're going to LEA, RDI, and what are we going to say here? We're going to say before swap. Now, RDI is the first parameter of the printf function. So now all we do is say call printf. So here you can see that I'm going to put the address of before swap into RDI and then call the printf function and it will then print out this message on the string. Notice 10 carriage return and then we're going to terminate that. Now, once we have that first original order of numbers, I actually want to show you, the user, what they are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, call show nums. Now this right here is gonna be a subroutine. Now, a lot of people get confused between subroutine and function. And let me tell you the difference, the way I believe. Subroutines, have no return value. And you guessed it, a function has a return value. So when I'm just gonna be printing the numbers, I don't need any feedback to come to me. So I'm gonna call this a subroutine. And I'm gonna call that show nums. Let's write that. So we're gonna have a label here called show nums. And then we're gonna set up our register again, push RBP, and then move RBP, RSP. Now I'm going to be using two other registers, uh, push R12, and then I'm going to say push R13. I'm going to use these two registers to store our looping variables. Now look here, I'm going to say move R12, zero. Now this is like me saying index I equals zero. So I'll be pointing at this first element in nums. And then what we're gonna say is move R13. Uh, what do you think that's gonna be? That's right, array size. And we know that that is gonna be five. Now that right there is just gonna initialize this printing. And now we're gonna say show nums loop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compare R12 and R13. Now remember compare actually will set one of the flags and we're going to use JGE jump greater than equal to to another location called show nums exit. Now what we're going to do is our goal of this show nums is I want to take this list of numbers starting at the beginning and then print 0 and 13, 1 and 3, 2, 14. I think you get it. Move RSI R12. Now that is the first parameter. And remember, we're going to be populating this format right here. See this position equals percent %D, value percent %D? So RSI is my first parameter of the printf function. Now my second one is going to be RDX. So what we're going to say is move RDX. Then I'm going to say nums plus R12 times 8. Now in just a moment, all of this is going to make sense how we're using this addressing so nums is our array. R12, notice that we set it to zero. That's our indexer. And then eight is the size of our um, offsets, our data type, DQ. So now that we've set that up, now we're actually gonna wanna call the printf function. And all you say is uh, move RDI, the format, FMT, and then we're going to say uh, XOR, EAX, EAX. And then we're gonna call uh, printf. And let's make sure we spell this correctly. Does that make sense? All right, nice. 
Now, after we print that out, what we want to do is, remember R12 is my indexer. So I want to actually go to the next number. So what you do is you say ink R12. That just increments the R12 register. Now, after we increment that, we need to jump back up to this show nums loop. So we'll say jump. and show nums loop. Does that make sense? Okay, excellent. Now it is possible that when I compare R12 and R13, I'm going to want to exit that. And I'm going to want to exit at this label called show nums exit. And what I'm going to do is then pop the uh, variables that we used up here. So we're going to pop R12, pop R13, and we're gonna pop RBP. Now remember, this is a subroutine. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means when I call it, I got to return back to the line uh, after the one I called it. So I'm gonna say RET and return. So RET comes back up here to show nums and says, let's start executing line 23. Now, after this show the nums, then I actually want to do the swap. So we're gonna say call swap nums. So underneath this guy, we're gonna write the label swap numbers. Now, just like we did last time, we have to like preserve the stack. So we're gonna say push RBP and then move RBP RSP and then we're going to say push RBX, push RCX, move RBX nums. And then we're going to say move RCX nums plus eight. And then we're actually going to do the swap. Now watch this right here. We say move nums. And notice here, that looks like position sub-zero, right? And then I'm going to say RCX. So I'm taking the second number here in my list that's, that was uh, placed in RCX. I'm going to put that in nums. And then what we'll say is uh, move nums plus eight RBX. So that actually does the swap right there. Now, once we're done with that, we're going to say pop RCX, pop RBX, pop RBP, and then return. So this is pretty easy to understand this. Now, let us take a look at this swap uh, command right here. I'm going to take these four, four, Y, Y, and I'm going to paste them. And I'm going to write these just a little bit different. Now, when um, we're looking up here at the our values, remember I said that this is 0 and this is uh, 8, 16, 24, 32. Those are the offsets. And down here, this may be kind of confusing that you might not see the offset. So we're going to kind of rewrite this. So what we're going to say here is nums plus zero times eight. Okay, so now what does zero mean? Well, zero is the offset, and eight is the size of the data type. Now, what will be the second one here? Well, you got it. This is going to be one times eight. That makes sense? Okay, perfect. And then down here, we're gonna say um, plus zero times eight. And then down here, we're going to say plus one times eight. Now you can see here, we just swap the, the letters just like we did here. But this right here is this, here is our array that we defined upstairs. Here's the position. And the position times this number. So what's zero times eight? 
Well, that's zero. And one times eight, it will be eight. And if we look at our offsets here, zero, eight, 16, 24, and 32. I think you get it. Uh, so these are identical code. Just figure out how you like to see it. I kind of like 69 to 72 and you know, just do it appropriately. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy, comment this out and, and then we're all done with that. Now, why did we have to push and pop? Well, remember we're inside of a subroutine and this subroutine, you know, might use these registers. So what we wanted to do is preserve the stuff that was already in memory before this got called. And that's why we're using the stack. So on line 16 to 19, we printed out a header. Then I showed you the numbers and then we sort, then we swap the sub zero and one number, the first and second number. Now what I want to do is I want to show you the list again, and we can see that the order did change. Now, how would I do that? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to print another header. So instead of me retyping this, I'm just going to yank this. So I'm going to say four YY and come down here and say paste. Now it's a little different. It's not before swap. What did we call that? We called that after swap. So we're going to say here, we're going to say after swap. So, and now that we've done that, now you know that after we did that, we just want to show those numbers again. Now this is what's so beautiful about a subroutine. All I have to do is say call show nums. Now show nums will print out the change to our list. And now we just need to exit this program. Now we just say move RAX 60 uh, exclusive or uh, RDI, RDI, that just zeroes that out. And then we're just going to say sys call. And I'm going to right quit that. And we are all done with this program. So you can see that we're back in our folder, source ASM swap, and our file is called swap.sh. That's the script file I wrote to do the assembling and compiling. So I can say a cat cat uh, dot slash swap dot sh. Now NASM is our assembler and minus G is for debugging and swap ASM is our source code. And I say, make this my output. So swap dot O will be my output file. Then I'll use GCC to actually link this up to make our executable. So to get this to run, we need to say dot slash swap dot sh. Now before we look at that, it's possible that you haven't changed this file to be executable. So ls minus al, notice over here we have our patterns. And notice the x. The x means it's executable by a user. So every three characters is for a different user set. So to make that executable to all users, all you have to do is say chmod plus x swap.sh ls minus al, and you can see that our x's are set. We can type in the command clear and then ls minus al, not to compile our program, assemble it, swap.sh, and then to run our program, dot slash swap. You can remember our before, our after. Notice here we got 13.3 and then we have 3.13. And that's the end of this program team. If you have any questions or comments about this program, please leave them in the comments section below. If you learned a thing or two, press the thumbs up button to show me that you appreciated this video. I'd appreciate it.